in 10 or 20 years when an algorithm can tell any teenager exactly where he or she is on the gay straight spectrum and even how malleable this position is. Whether they're gay or straight or non-binary, this is Klaus Schwab's right-hand man, a technocrat, something that a lot of billionaires look up to. This is a guy that a lot of very powerful people look up to as their thought leader is literally talking about algorithms determining children's sexual identity. And this is next level sci-fi stuff that you know people think is 10 years away, 20 years, 30 years, somewhere deep in the future, no. And this is something that they publicly talk about, publicly boast about. You can only imagine what privately they're doing behind the scenes that we don't even know about. Check out my video with Luke Krakowski at the Bitcoin conference in Miami. We spoke about New World Order, AIs, and more. If you like what you see, check out bitcoinreports.ca for more from the Bitcoin conference. So you've been following the World Economic Forum, Karl Schwab, and the Great Reset. What is your latest on that? There's a lot of crazy developments, especially when it comes to this larger technocratic totalitarianism that humanity is facing. I've been talking about this for a very long time, almost since the beginning of my career, because the writings are on the wall. The doors are closing in, especially in our digital landscape that our lives are becoming more entangled in. And the more we depend on our lives to be on our phones, the more a lot of people who control the algorithms and the phones have power and access not only to us, but programming us to a certain level. There's this new video coming out that I've been ranting and raving about that I found online specifically of Yaval Noara Harari. This is Klaus Schwab's right-hand man that talked about how in the future there's going to be predictive AI programs that will help identify children's sexual identity. In 10 or 20 years, when an algorithm can tell any teenager exactly where he or she is on the gay straight spectrum and even how malleable this position is. Whether they're gay or straight or non-binary, this is Klaus Schwab's right-hand man, a technocrat, something that a lot of billionaires look up to. This is a guy that a lot of very powerful people look up to as their thought leader is literally talking about algorithms determining children's sexual identity and this is next level sci-fi stuff that you know people think is 10 years away 20 years 30 years somewhere deep in the future no there's a lot of technological advancements that i think humanity really needs to be made aware of really needs to look out for again yoal noal horari i'm saying his name wrong you probably look it up yourself klaus schwab's right hand man he also talked about how humanity needs to be pacified with with drugs and video games the problem is more uh, boredom and how, what to do with them and how will they find some sense of meaning in life when they are basically meaningless, worthless. My best guess at present is a combination of drugs and computer games. And when you look at the larger kind of digital technocratic prison that they're building, we're seeing a situation that is the perfect storm that was there beforehand. And now the, the latest kind of talking point, instead of the New World Order, instead of Agenda 2030, is of course Build Back Better, Great Reset. They all use different buzzwords. They all talk about the same kind of larger idea. And that of course is centralization of power. And here at Bitcoin, luckily, there's a lot of conversations about decentralizing a lot of that power. And that's why I think it's so important to talk about because these technocrats are literally shaping the future that we are all going to be living in and are having less options to not live within it. So how important is it for people to get involved, get out and vote and make sure these people that are pushing for these agendas, I know they're not elected, but there's elected leaders that follow these stuff. Yeah, I mean, well, the artificial intelligence that they're talking about in the future that they want to kind of help people get assigned their, their general their gender kind of identity is is just another open admission. This is something that they publicly talk about, publicly boast about. You can only imagine what privately they're doing behind the scenes that we don't even know about. I think it's very fair to say that there's a war on people's minds. I think a lot of people's minds are being shaped in a lot of ways that they don't even realize, whether through propaganda, whether through Hollywood, whether through the, the algorithms. I think it's fair to say that a large person, people of humanity 
a large, large portion of humanity is being manipulated in one way or another. You talked about politicians. I usually call them puppets. I don't usually have a lot of faith in puppets since, of course, the people who truly do wield the power are the ones who put these puppets into play in order to placate the general public into believing that they have some kind of power or in reality the true power lies with knowledge and information. I think just being informed of what's going on is the first step towards understanding the future that they're trying to build for you, the prison that they're literally uh, creating for you, that they're programming you to walk in and to try to enjoy. So a lot of this is psychological, a lot of this is subliminal. I think being made aware that there's this larger agenda, that there's a lot of people who control the algorithms, who are literally creating a form of mind control that are out there, that people need to realize, hey, if I tune out, if I really start to examine information, critically think, and not just look at the carefully curated information that they want me to see. Once you start opening up your perspectives and looking at independent media, and whether it's Rebel News, We Are Change, or any other platform out there, it, supporting and consuming independent media and helping build this larger ecosystem of, of, of truth, of, of counter culture, kind of pushing back against this soy boy bullcrap nonsense that they're pushing on all of us, I think is key and important. And I think that's why you know, education knowledge, activism, and just starting the conversation is so important. And again, we don't always get things right. We might be wrong. But again, that conversation, I think, is more crucial than ever, uh, especially with the doors closing in with how absolutely crazy the world is becoming with all these technocrats and all the power that they wield. And how important do you think Bitcoin is, or I guess crypto in general, to fight back against government control? When Bitcoin first came out, and it was still worth a couple of dollars, that was the first question that I had specifically to Max Kaiser, who was my friend. Uh, and I asked him, how do we know that Bitcoin isn't going to be the one world government currency, the, the centralized currency that's going to track, trace, and database everything, the globalist currency? And he gave me, he gave me a very good answer a long time ago. Can Bitcoin go, do battle with the central banks, the Bank of England, Federal Reserve Bank? And I yeah. think, yeah, it's going to do battle. It's going to succeed. These central banks are going to either start buying Bitcoin or perish. I would refer you to that video on youtube.com forward slash we are change. You could watch that video because this is a subject that I've been talking about for a while. But for me, uh, Bitcoin is a new technology, just like the Internet. It could be wielded for good. It could be wielded for bad. Same with Bitcoin. It's a new technology, just like the Internet when it first came out. A lot of possibilities. And it's good to see a lot of pe people here that are very important in the Bitcoin community talk about personal responsibility, talk about freedom, talk about the importance of holding your own keys, having your own privacy, having security in a way that doesn't rely on mafioso state government agencies and bureaucrats coming in there and getting their cut of the pie because they're, they're pretty much acting like, like thugs. So, so seeing the free Ross aspect, seeing that a lot of these OG Bitcoiners are pretty much coming from the Ron Paul Liberty Revolution, is, is, is something good to see. Bitcoin, its future trajectory is impossible to foretell. Whether it will be used for good or bad, I think that's going to be determined by the people who use it. And I think overwhelmingly the consensus I'm getting here is that it's being used for the overall good, for the larger decentralization of power, rather than the centralization and controlling of humanity. Where can people find more of your stuff? LukeUncensored.com, I have another website I've been like busting my butt, working extremely hard. Uh, LukeUncensored.com is, is one of the ways that I've been kind of pouring a lot of my hard effort into my blood, sweat, and tears. The YouTube channel is like fine, but like the thing that I'm most proud of is the master classes and the exclusive stuff, LukeUncensored.com. And uh, yeah, thank you guys at Rebel News for everything you guys, you guys are doing. And uh, you guys got to keep up the great work because uh, I always appreciate this kind of spirit of independent journalism, which I think we need a lot more of. Check out the merch I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Go Trucker shirt and think it's the legal shirt. If you like that this shirt or many others that we have, check out rebelnewsstore.com. Rebelnewsstore.com.